Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing a quick demo on the Maximal License Usage Monitor application. We're going to go over a couple, couple use cases and a few gotchas that, uh, that I found in my experience that hopefully can save you time later down the road when you get into this application and start using it for yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is right from our start center, we're going to navigate to the application. We need to first make sure that we've got access to this application, so we have to be administrative users. Uh, we're going to go into the administrative module or administration module. We're going to click the license usage monitor selection and it will take us to the license application. So we can first click and see what licenses we've got set up in the system. So we can see that already we've got two licenses set up and they're different license types. So we've got an authorized, we've got a limited. They're both for maximal base services. So IBM maximal asset management. We can see the amount of licenses owned, the number deployed, which how many uh, counts how many users are using these type of licenses and whether we're under or over license which is very handy for us when we're trying to monitor our compliance and ensure that we're not over use in our our license agreement so we'll start by creating a new record it auto numbers you can set your own value in here if that makes sense to you if you want to do that we're going to give it a description so we're going to call this express license we're going to give it a product name. So we have to choose between all of the industry solutions and add-ons that we've got installed. If you've only got maximal base services, you'd only have the one option here. Perfect. That actually makes things a little easier for you. Uh, and we'll continue with just base services for now. We have to select our license type. So in this case, if you gathered by the description, we're going to be selecting an express license. And we need to put some purchasing information. So Maximo needs to know how many of these licenses, at the very least, we've purchased. So we're going to put in 20 of these licenses and we're going to save our record. We could put a person responsible here. Now this is just a person that exists in Maximo that's meant to be tracking the license and the compliance. We could set the pur purchased by, so the purchaser that actually made the deal for the licenses. Again, that's not a, absolutely necessary. It's just informational. Uh, we can put our purchase date and the maintenance renewal date when our licensing agreement is up for renewal. And finally, we could put in a vendor. So if we wanted to, if we purchased directly from IBM, we could put IBM in, in here. This doesn't necessarily have to match your company records that you've already got existing in Maximal. This is just a free text field. Moving on, as soon as we've entered our product name and our license type, if we go over to the applications tab, this automatically gets populated based on this combination with the different applications that are set up in Maximo and the rights by default that this type of license would have. So we can see here we've got 145 um, applications here. Um, but what if we're curious and we just want to see what different rights different licenses have. Well, we can see that. So in the side menu, we've got the application access. We can click here and it basically goes through every different product name, every different application name, and it'll tell you what different type of licenses have in terms of access. So we can see self-service, express, limited, and authorized, and the different types of access each of these applications would have for all of these applications. Now what happens if we are in a situation that's a very common situation where we've created our own applications or duplicated an application? Well, we can actually add these to the license application here by just clicking new row. You have to select your product name. So if it, whether you're, you've cloned a base services application or an oil and gas application, you'd select that here. And then you'd actually go through and select your application here. Now, this shows absolutely everything that's in your Max Apps table, which may be not necessarily already be included in a license. So that's why they give you the, the flexibility to add your own. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're going to save this and we can see here we've got a license use tab so we've got our license in a draft status for now which means no calculations are, are actually running to, to determine what type of uh, users fit into this license type we first have to activate it and once it's activated and the process runs uh, we'll see some information of who the licenses is being used by how many licenses we're using the variance in terms of how many are owned versus how many are deployed um, but I've been talking about that automatic process that does this calculating. So how do we set that up? 
Well, that's actually done in the data collection settings over here. Again, on the sidebar menu, if I open this up, we can set a schedule. So this schedule is just going to go run through. It's going to go through every user, the different rights or access they have in the system, and then determine which type of license they fit into. So I've got mine running very frequently right now. It is active. It's running every minute. I would recommend you only need to do one a day. That's fine. Maybe at off hours overnight, one in the morning. Um, that's totally fine. You don't need to go as often as I've got here. But what I wanted to show you is what happens if I activate this. So we can activate it. That means in the next minute it'll be doing its thing and that's totally fine. Uh, while it's running, I did want to explain a few things while we've got a minute. So I'm going to go to limited and I'm going to go to the application. So we've actually got different application access in limited versus express versus authorized. That makes sense. That's totally fine. Um, but I did want to talk about the different types of access levels. So in Maximo, um, based on the signature options that you're granted for each of the applications uh, in, in your security groups, uh, you, you may have different access levels. So uh, full access means that you would have access to create, um, delete, save and read. From, from a certain application. No access is very obvious. It means you have access for none of these. Read-only access makes sense. You don't have access to create, delete, or save, but you do have access to read the data in certain applications. Um, but read, save might be a little bit strange to some of you. And now this ties into the, the limited functionality. So if I see in my limited applications list, I've got a few that are read, save, and they also have this available for limited license checked. Now what that means is basically if you your specific user account uh, has access to one of the modules that this application's in, you'll get full access to it if this is checked. But for those of you unfamiliar with limited licenses, uh, users with a limited license only get access to applications within three modules, so whether that's the app assets module, uh, purchasing module, and inventory module, you could have full access to those and you'd see all of those applications would have read, save, and, and this available for limited license checked mark beside it, um, but you wouldn't have access to say four of those. So you wouldn't have access to applications in work order and assets and inventory and purchasing. It has to be a combination of only three of those. So that's what this little checkbox is for and it only applies to the limited license. Uh, the other thing that I, I did want to mention is industry solutions, right? So we've got a few different industry solutions here, but what happens if users are members of or, or have access to different assets or uh, sorry uh, applications rather in different industry solutions well that does cause some complications with the license usage monitoring application and what ends up being the case is users aren't picked up for um, any of these licenses and i can actually show, explain this right now so if i go to my license usage right now i've only got one user that's picked up as an authorized now authorized should have a lot of users because these are the users with full access to everything. And I can see here that Ed is the only one that's picked up. Now that's because I've created a specific group that only uses out of the box applications, but every other user in the system, and there's hundreds of them, have some mix of oil and gas and transportation and out of the box applications. So if you have anything beyond what this specific license grants you, you won't show up in this list. So it is up to the administrator that's in charge of monitoring your licensing compliance to match your license deployed count for all of your licenses and compare that to your active users in the system. Because we can see here, um, I've got probably hundreds of active users in the system, but I've only got two licenses deployed. So the license usage monitor doesn't necessarily let you know what's not being picked up in the system. And it's very important that you, you do remember that going forward. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is if I did want to create a self-service license, that's not available in the current version for the license usage monitor. So if I go out of the box, uh, I can, can't really speak to the other industry solutions, but for base services, if I try and do a self-service type license, I can't. So that again is something that your administrator is going to have to manage outside of this application for you. Uh, okay, so let's have a look here. So we can see that it's gone through, it's done its count. I've got 20 licenses owned, 20 zero licenses are deployed. And that's because I haven't set up any users that have uh, specifically express access to, to certain applications. Every user is either um, has access to applications outside of base services 
or they've got authorized access in Ed's case, as we saw, or they've got limited access as uh, Tom Daly has right here. So that's just a quick demo. Uh, hopefully it helps you understand the, the usage, uh, some pitfalls, and uh, answer some of the questions that you might have going forward as you try and set this up for yourself. Thanks.